Hi everyone, it's Adam, Chief Security Officer here with Act Zero, and today we're gonna to be talking about some of the economics of incident response. 82% of ransomware breaches reported in 2023 were from small to medium businesses, that is organizations with less than a thousand people. And it's easy to see why. In the United States, roughly 30,000 businesses have their websites breached every single day. And your average user receives about 1.5 spam messages out of the roughly 120 emails they have to read every day. That basically means at some point they're gonna be dealing with a cybersecurity incident. Now, most of these companies do not have a recovery plan in place. They have technology, they have not staffed it with people, and therefore, for when they actually come down in terms of their uh, ransomware attacks, the average estimate for their downtime is somewhere between 14 to 24 days. You also have a cost of roughly $1.85 million on average to come back from a cybersecurity attack in terms of outage and downtime and other payments that people have to make. We've all seen the headlines, of course, and so cyber insurers tend to be sort of a, a remuneration for businesses that are looking to recover from this, but they only really pay out on average about $365,000. So you can see how the imbalance is in the favor of the attacker to actually get paid that you know average of uh, tens of thousands of dollars in ransomware. Now, with a 5% success rate for cybersecurity attacks, we need to talk about what it is you can deploy behind it to try to cut that number down even further. When you think about managed detection and response, this is exactly what the services intend to do. Let's talk about the economics of deploying those types of things at different areas. First up, the endpoint. If you think about your endpoint, that is your Windows, your Macintosh, your Linux servers, that's the best place to get hacked because any application can run. Inside that environment, you have a 79 minute breakout time. That is the time it takes an attacker to get from one asset, break out to others on the network and shut you down on the whole. Of course, when you think about your metrics for success, you have to be able to beat that time. On average, you're gonna have a security operations center, severity one, critical alert, response time, mean time to response of about 30 minutes written in contract. So if you do go with a MSP or MDR, they're usually gonna put somebody behind your tools and you expect them to respond in 30 minutes. But just what's supposed to happen in those 30 minutes? Well, you do need a qualified person to not only contain the threat, but find ways to get rid of the attacker. That is block an IP address or disable a user account or reverse uh, and quarantine a, a, an asset that can't communicate on the network anymore to buy them the time they need to take the action. Now, because that time is so critical, Act Zero invested several uh, of their patents in, in R&D into developing technology that could speed that time, what we call SOC efficiency. Now, it's important to understand that on the endpoint, you need to be able to block things in the millisecond, react in minutes, and that response time is not only something that we can demonstrate on average in the portal, but is demonstrated in our service contracts as an SLA money back if we get it wrong. Now, the second place, obviously, that we want to be able to focus is the cloud. This is where all our applications and emails are tending to move. So, of course, the attackers are going to move over to that target as well. Within the cloud, the economics are a little bit more dire, right? There is logs that have, you know, massive, uh, you know, uh, review processes in order to be able to find uh, one of these attackers. The needle in the haystack of whether an account was compromised and access to file that it shouldn't have and downloaded that. And then the attacker comes back and tries to extort you for some money, right? Some of the math here is that you get, you know, roughly thousands of emails a day. It would be almost impossible for somebody to set up an incident response process that required searching through this. And so the idea is that the response capability has to be able, like on the endpoint where we can stop the actions from happening, something has to go and coordinate a block. And in the MDR service, the most effective way to do this is to disable the account. Many people feel that there's a lot of different ways to get to the cloud and they'd be right through VPNs or through a user's workstation, an authorized or an unauthorized one. And so having the intelligence to be able to morph all of that different context to find and stop an attacker that is not necessarily one of your trusted users is exactly what you have to do in response to these attacks to prevent the attacker from going forward. Now, the other area that we tend to focus on that almost everybody tends to ignore is mobile devices. And this is where our mobile agent for iOS, Android, and Chromebook can be deployed to find and block communication between two applications. This is very valuable when your users are going to get fished from a WhatsApp or a text message, or they're going to get a third-party application that has some nefarious control by an outside attacker. Of the breaches reported in 2023, many of them, over 30%, actually involved the mobile device, that is iOS and Android. With little to no protection, it's obvious that the attackers have free reign over this environment 
environment if they have a particular exploit. And so at Axio, we felt it was very important to not only deploy an application there that not only protected the user's privacy, but gave us the opportunity to block communication between applications. We believe that's a must in terms of incident response. One more area we want to talk about, and that is the network where tens of thousands of different botnets can be spamming your, uh, you know, brute forcing and sending exploits all over your uh, external services that are protected by those firewalls. At Act Zero, we have a threat intelligence list that allows us to be able to pull in and pull out IPs at, at, at pretty quick speed for them to uh, block the attacker permanently from being able to send those commands off to your server. Uh, traditional IPS, for example, would probably generate hundreds of alerts, which would fill the inbox. Uh, so we have to move to an autonomous SOC that can actually solve the problem here. So the threat intelligence uh, list or, or the block list uh, is the ideal way to constantly uh, stay ahead of the attacker's ability to change IPs and tactics uh, and keep them off of, of your networks. Find out more from Act Zero by reaching out to us at actzero.ai. Thanks so much. Yeah.